It's 30 times rarer than gold, resistant to extreme heat, and essential for industries ranging from automotive to aerospace. Platinum isn't just a luxury metal, it's a key player in modern technology, medicine, and even the quest for clean energy. But have you ever wondered where platinum comes from? How is it extracted from deep within the earth? And with its growing demand, could we run out of this precious metal? From ancient Egyptian artifacts to cutting-edge hydrogen fuel cells, platinum has shaped human history in ways most people never realize. Today, it's more valuable than ever. But with increasing mining challenges and new sources being explored, including outer space, the future of platinum could be unlike anything we've seen before. Let's dive into the science, history, and future of this incredible metal. Platinum is a fascinating metal, both in its history and its modern applications. As a grey-white precious metal, it belongs to an elite group known as the Platinum Group Metals (PGMs), which includes iridium, osmium, palladium, rhodium, and ruthenium. Among these, Platinum is the most abundant and widely used. With an atomic number of 78 and an atomic mass of 195 units, it boasts a melting point of 1768 degrees Celsius. Not only is platinum highly resistant to corrosion, but it also maintains stability at high temperatures and possesses excellent electrical properties. The name platinum comes from the Spanish word platina, which translates to little silver. This term was first coined by Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century, who had no appreciation for platinum's value or potential uses. To them, it was an irritating impurity that got in the way of gold mining. At the time, a popular but mistaken belief was that platina was merely immature gold that would eventually turn yellow over time. Unaware of its worth, miners discarded the metal tossing it aside in their pursuit of the more familiar and coveted gold. Unlike gold, platinum is rarely found in pure form. It is often discovered alongside elements such as copper, iron, nickel, and naturally, other platinum group metals. When found in the wild, platinum is not particularly eye-catching. It usually appears as dull gray or black nuggets, which can easily be overlooked. However, its weight is a giveaway. Platinum is incredibly dense, much heavier than it appears at first glance. In cases where iron is present in the alloy, platinum can also exhibit slight magnetic properties, making it easier to identify. The earliest known use of platinum dates back centuries before the Spanish conquest of South America in 1492. The indigenous peoples of Ecuador, particularly in the province of Esmeraldas, were master metallurgists who created intricate platinum jewelry. This was an extraordinary achievement considering that platinum is significantly more difficult to work with compared to gold or silver. These skilled artisans developed an ingenious technique. They coated small platinum fragments with gold dust, then heated them using blowpipes over pieces of wood charcoal. The molten gold acted as a bonding agent, allowing the platinum to sinter a process in which the metal coalesces into a solid mass through heat. This remarkable craftsmanship amazed anthropologists, leading researcher William Faraby to proclaim, the native Indian workers of Esmeraldas were metallurgists of marked ability. They were the only people who manufactured platinum jewelry. Platinum's status as the rarest and hardest of all precious metals has made it a favorite for jewelry throughout the ages. Its resistance to scratches and tarnishing ensures that it remains pristine even after years of wear. But beyond its use in luxury items, platinum is an essential industrial metal with applications spanning multiple sectors. One of platinum's most valuable properties is its strong catalytic ability. It can accelerate chemical reactions without being consumed in the process. This characteristic makes it a key component in catalytic converters, which are crucial for reducing vehicle emissions. In fact, catalytic converters account for nearly 50% of the global platinum demand each year. 
playing a vital role in improving air quality by minimizing harmful pollutants from car exhausts. Platinum's high melting point and stability under extreme conditions also make it indispensable in laboratories. It is used to manufacture electrodes, crucibles and dishes that can withstand high temperatures. The chemical industry relies heavily on platinum catalysts for producing essential compounds such as nitric acid, benzene and silicone. Moreover, platinum is crucial in advancing fuel cell technology, helping improve efficiency in alternative energy sources. The electronics sector also benefits from platinum's unique properties. It is a key material in the production of computer hard disks, thermocouples, optical fibers, and LCD screens. Additionally, it is used in the aerospace industry for turbine blades and in the automotive industry for spark plugs. In the medical field, platinum's biocompatibility makes it an ideal material for pacemakers, dental crowns, bridges, and fillings. Given its durability and resistance to corrosion, it has become a standard in high-quality dental work. Perhaps one of platinum's most significant contributions to humanity is its role in cancer treatment. Platinum compounds are a fundamental component in chemotherapy drugs, helping millions of patients fight cancer. This life-saving application underscores just how valuable platinum is, not just as a symbol of wealth and prestige, but as a vital element in modern medicine and technology. Platinum, one of the rarest metals on Earth, is almost never found on its own. Instead, it hides within deposits of platinum group metals, nickel, iron, and gold. Though pure platinum deposits exist, they are the exception rather than the rule. One of the earliest ways humans extracted platinum was through placer mining, much like gold. Over time, rivers and streams eroded platinum-bearing rocks, washing tiny particles into alluvial sands. These deposits, rich in platinum grains and nuggets, became prime targets for prospectors. In the 19th century, Russia's Ural Mountains were the epicenter of platinum placer mining, with both small-scale family operations and larger enterprises scouring the riverbeds. South America also played a key role, Miners in Argentina and Uruguay hunted for platinum in the famous Rio de la Plata, or River of Silver. Placer mining involved dredging riverbeds, sifting through sand and gravel, and carefully separating platinum from surrounding materials. But as easily accessible deposits dwindled, mining had to go deeper. Today, platinum is primarily found underground, requiring a process similar to gold and silver extraction. Miners drill into rock, pack explosives into the holes, and blast apart the earth to free the metal-rich ore. The shattered rock is hauled to the surface and transported to processing facilities. Now, the vast majority of the world's platinum comes from deep beneath South Africa, which produces around 80% of the global supply. But the story of platinum isn't just about mining. It's also about discovery. The first person to identify this extraordinary metal embarked on a thrilling adventure across continents, survived capture and a daring escape at sea, and laid the foundation for platinum's rise as one of the most valuable metals in the world. Antonio de Ulloa was just 19 years old when he was given a responsibility that would change the course of his life and unknowingly contribute to scientific advancements that would resonate for centuries. The young Spanish officer had barely begun his naval career when he was promoted to the rank of frigate lieutenant and assigned to an extraordinary expedition to Quito, Ecuador. This was no ordinary mission. It was a scientific endeavor of global significance led by renowned French geographers Charles-Marie de la Condamine and Pierre Bouguet. In May of 1735, Antonio set sail from Spain, unaware that he would not set foot on his homeland again for more than a decade. The primary objective of this mission was groundbreaking, to settle a long-standing debate about the shape of the Earth. For most of human history, it had been widely believed that the Earth was flat. However, Sir Isaac Newton, 
had proposed that the planet was, in fact, an oblate spheroid, slightly flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator due to centrifugal forces. To test this hypothesis, scientists needed to measure the length of a degree of longitude at different latitudes, comparing a region near the equator to another close to the poles. While a separate expedition traveled to the far north of Sweden for this purpose, Antonio and his team headed to Quito, the closest city to the equator. The expedition was arduous, requiring immense physical and mental endurance. Traversing the rugged terrain of the Andes, Antonio and his colleagues endured extreme weather, treacherous paths, and resistance from local populations unfamiliar with their purpose. The work was painstakingly slow, but after nearly a decade of meticulous measurements and calculations, the mission was finally completed around 1745. Through sheer determination, they had confirmed Newton's theory, reshaping humanity's understanding of the planet. During his years in Ecuador, Antonio took the opportunity to explore the land, its people, and its natural resources. His curiosity led him to document various observations in detailed notes, many of which would later prove to be of great scientific value. Among his most intriguing discoveries was an unusual metal found in the Chaco region, dismissed by local miners as a mere nuisance, platinum. Eager to return home, Antonio joined the rest of the expedition in setting sail for Spain. However, fate had other plans. As their ship rounded Cape Horn and made its way north past the Azores, disaster struck. An English privateer spotted their vessel and gave chase, capturing them. Against the odds, they managed to escape, slipping through enemy hands and continuing their journey. Yet their relief was short-lived. When they reached Louisburg in Nova Scotia, their luck ran out. This time, they were intercepted by a British naval vessel, and any hope of escape was crushed. Antonio and his companions were taken to London as prisoners, their decade-long research confiscated by the British Admiralty. For a young scientist and explorer who had dedicated years of his life to this mission, the loss was devastating. Yet in the midst of despair, Fortune smiled upon him once more. Finally free, Antonio returned to Spain and began compiling his experiences into a comprehensive account. In 1748, he published his findings, first in Spanish and then in multiple languages, ensuring that his observations reached a global audience. Among the many passages of interest in his book, one stood out. His description of the peculiar metal found in Choco, which he noted was so resistant that it could not easily be separated or melted. At the time, the significance of this discovery was not fully realized. Antonio's contributions did not go unnoticed by the Spanish monarchy. King Ferdinand VI soon entrusted him with another mission, to travel across Europe and study the latest scientific and technological developments. His journey took him to Sweden in the autumn of 1751, where he was warmly received by the scientific community. His reputation had preceded him, and by October, he was elected as a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. During his stay, Antonio met with the esteemed mathematician and chemist H. T. Scheffer, a former mine manager and expert in metallurgy. Though no official records exist of their conversations, their meeting was followed by a groundbreaking development. In November 1751, Scheffer published a paper titled The White Gold, or Seventh Metal, called in Spain Platina del Pinto, Little Silver of Pinto, its nature described. In it, he meticulously analyzed platinum, the very metal Antonio had encountered in Ecuador. Scheffer concluded that platinum was a unique metal, distinct from the six known metals at the time, gold, silver, copper, tin, lead, and iron. He described its remarkable properties. It was as durable as gold and silver, yet harder than malleable iron. He also noted its resistance to corrosion and suggested a practical application, using platinum to make telescope mirrors due to its resilience against atmospheric vapors. 
Though platinum never became a staple in telescope manufacturing during that era, Scheffer's insights paved the way for future scientific advancements. The discovery of platinum sparked global interest. Scientists across Europe began investigating the metal, leading to a deeper understanding of its properties and potential applications. Over time, platinum found its place in a wide range of fields, from jewelry and industrial catalysts to medical devices and even space technology. The extraction of platinum, while economically significant, brings a host of environmental challenges. Mining activities often lead to the destruction of natural habitats, disrupting ecosystems and biodiversity. Pollution from mining operations, including the release of toxic substances and heavy metals, can contaminate soil and water sources, posing risks to both wildlife and human populations. To address these concerns, the platinum mining industry is increasingly adopting sustainable practices. Reducing carbon emissions is a key focus, with companies investing in cleaner energy sources and more efficient technologies to power mining operations. Waste management is another critical area, with efforts to minimize waste production and enhance recycling processes to reduce the environmental footprint of mining activities. Innovative technologies are being employed to mitigate environmental impacts. For example, advancements in water treatment techniques aim to prevent contamination and promote the reuse of water within mining operations. This not only conserves water resources, but also reduces the risk of pollutants entering surrounding ecosystems. Rehabilitation and reclamation of mining sites are also gaining importance. After the extraction process is complete, Companies are implementing programs to restore the land to its natural state or repurpose it for other beneficial uses. This includes replanting native vegetation, improving soil quality, and creating new habitats for wildlife. These efforts help to offset the environmental damage caused by mining and contribute to the long-term health of the ecosystem. Community engagement is crucial for the success of these sustainability initiatives. Mining companies are increasingly involving local communities in environmental monitoring and decision-making processes. This collaborative approach ensures that the needs and concerns of those directly affected by mining activities are addressed, fostering more responsible and ethical practices. Platinum has played a crucial role in human history, and its future is just as exciting. Whether it's in your car, your jewellery, or even future space missions, platinum remains a metal of immense value and potential. What do you think about the future of platinum mining? Let us know in the comments below.